Hello everybody, um, a while ago when I uploaded the uh, video for the Sawara False Cypress um, Formal Upright Tree I mentioned that I bought a couple of cedars um, and these are they. On the left there we have a Cedrus Libani, Cedar of Lebanon uh, and over on the right there we have the Cedus Diodara, which is the Himalayan cedar. Um, now the uh, cedar of Lebanon usually has a kind of flatter top to it, and the uh, Cedus Diodara normally is a conical, uh, fairly typical uh, conifer shape, uh, pyramidal, I guess you could say. Um, in this case, this one's particularly top heavy. I don't think they had a lot of love during lockdown. Um, there was a lot of dead needles I had to clear out on them. Uh, and they weren't marked down, but... Uh, As you'll know if you follow my channel, I loves me a bargain. So, um, yeah. Remember, garden plants are not suitable for consumption. <laughs> Good job I wasn't going to eat it then. Yeah, I had to clean out a lot of dead needles and um but they're fit and healthy now they're, they're definitely looking better than they were when i bought them and uh today i'm going to well today i'm going to work on the cedar of lebanon and put it in a pot um and the diodara i'll leave and do a video on another day there's something for you to look forward to Okay, let's give you a quick uh, 360 before we begin. Um, it's quite top heavy, this tree. And I did consider for a while um, that maybe it uh, could be styled in this way of a sort of flat top um, pond cypress, swamp cypress. But then I thought, no, I'm already doing that with an actual swamp cypress. So. Um, I'll probably style this more to look more like a, a cedar of Lebanon um, but that does mean I'm going to have to do some chopping back at the top to allow some of the growth at the base to um, to stretch out more so but the first thing I want to do is I want to get this into a, a shorter lower pot um, so that we can actually get some um, get it into some better soil and get a shorter flatter root ball and what I'm going to use for that is one of these pond baskets. Uh, they work quite like an air pot, so uh, as the roots hit the side and try to come through, air will prune them and then that will cause them to keep shooting new roots. Uh, the theory is that you will then get a nice fibrous root system. Um, we will try it and see. I've used some, it with some other trees um, with some good success. So. Yeah, let's do that. So, let's try and get it out of the pot. I've no idea how long it's been in this pot. Um, the pot's had a hole in it at some point in its life. Um, so, first thing I want to do is get rid of all these weeds, obviously. And then, that's just rotted away. I want to try and find uh, the nevari of this tree. I do have quite a few roots going round and round uh, at the top here, unfortunately, but we'll just deal with them as best we can. As I say, I just want to get rid of the roots and I want to find the top of the, the root bulb so that um, when I shorten the depth of the soil um, I'm not leaving too little root because I found that the top of the, the root ball is uh, you know, way down here in the pot which I have found in the past. They're not always um, too, you know, too fussy when they're 
in the nursery repotting hundreds and hundreds of trees how deep they plant them another thing I should say is that uh, you should never uh, bear root a conifer um, they don't take to it well uh, and they often will just turn their roots up and die um, you know something you need to to think about when you're doing trees of your own if you do um, yeah never bear root a conifer always try and keep uh, about 50% I would say or even 60% of the original soil at first repotting uh, over the years as you introduce it to bonsai soil you'll be able to gradually uh, reduce that percentage or indeed increase the percentage of bonsai soil um, As the tree grows into the bonsai soil and the the original stuff will kind of disintegrate wash out through the holes in the bottom of the pot Okay, I think I'm going to leave the rest of this big root mass here at the moment. Um, it may come off in future pottings, or it may have to become a feature of the tree. Um, in the back there, it might not be too bad. And this is pretty much where my nibari is for the rest of it. So. Um, I'm not going to fit this into this pot very well um, but I will if I take off the bottom which is what I'm going to do I keep this old pruning saw I have one that I keep for best as it were but this one I just keep simply for chopping through roots this is why I didn't want to cut just cut the bottom off at the beginning because uh, you never know as I said how far down the, the pot the tree has been planted okay so now we need to get it into some good bonsai soil as I said I'm really not entirely happy with this lump here but um, beggars can't be choosers as it were and you can work with what you've got still a little bit high in the pot might seem a funny time of year but uh, there's still enough in the season for this tree to start getting its roots into the new soil uh, I think that'll work okay so we'll um, move this lot out of the way and uh, start getting it into some soil now this tree is going to be quite tall in relation to the uh, width of the pot therefore unstable if we get some windy autumnal weather although I shall try and keep it out of um, the wind for the next few weeks until it settles down 
um, I'm going to wire it into the pot which is uh, fairly easy with this uh, particular style of pot but you do need to make sure you get into one the areas next to a rib rather than these thin wires because they'll just tear out um, as you tighten the pot so one in diagonally in that direction and another in the other direction and there you have it that was fairly straightforward and um, we'll put in a shallow layer of uh, a very gritty bonsai mix um, doesn't need a huge amount of organic compound um, content in this mix and uh, I'm not worried about what's the front what's the back I just want to get it in and uh, given a little consideration as to the front in that it's going to have to sit sort of square on on the bench and I'm kind of liking hold tight um, kind of liking this curve in the top of the tree here so I'm going with that as my front for the moment as I say it's not particularly relevant or important okay so let's just make sure that it's sat right down into that soil. And the gritty mix should ensure that you get lots of good roots and the air pruning should ensure that they're nice and little fibrous roots so that's the little plan for the next few years as it were of having an apple tree over your head uh, I don't know if you heard that third that was an apple coming off the tree quite close to me they're cooking apples they're quite big so it's a sort of cooking apple Russian roulette as to whether I get hit on the head of an apple but no I'm far enough away I shouldn't well, I, should, I shouldn't say that either I should be safe enough here I hope. Okay, so uh, because of the way I pruned the roots and the, um, or, you know, chopped it all about, there's plenty of room for this soil to settle. There's no particular need to make sure I get it um, around and round and under the roots. That should be enough. Um, yeah. So now I'm going to get some water and we'll give that a drink. in the top a little okay so um, I'm sure you've, you're aware this stuff can be very dusty so you do need to give it a really really good rinsing through to get rid of the dust because the dust will clog up um, clog up drainage holes clog up the compost making it not as um, hab um, habitual no no that's not the word I really can't think of the word oh well never mind um, not as conducive for the plant growth something along those lines is what I'm trying to say um, but if you wash it all out in the first wash 
as or well, first watering then you get rid of that dust otherwise if you don't as the, the pot um, dries out if the dust is left it'll sort of congeal and harden almost like uh, cement so I'm giving this tree almost a well, good half a watering can full make sure all that dust is gone okay so that's uh, hopefully set it up for the first part of its journey um, the roots will need a lot of refining over a lot of years but uh, it's out of yeah, a lot of like gacky soil and can now get its roots into some good soil here apologies the sun's come around it's sort of washing out some of the top a little bit but uh, uh, bit of a spin this I'm thinking is my front um, and uh, I'm gonna leave some of these lower branches from here downwards I'm going to lose which um, I think is going to help with the amount of root loss that we've got so let's move in and uh, we'll start at the bottom and work our way up to the top Okay, so I've uh, chopped back the lower third of the tree, all the branches. Um, I'm going to keep them on as possible gins later. Um, I may not use them, I may use them, but obviously if I chop them right off, there's no option of using them later. So I've removed uh, all the foliage on any bits that are left that'll take some of the strain off the tree which has lost a third to a half of its roots going into this pot and um, you know you don't want to overwork a tree and kill it dead in its first uh, first piece of work that you do with it which is uh, something I've done with trees in the past when I've tried to copy what I've seen on YouTube and whatnot and people take a plant from the garden centre or the nursery and wire it and prune it and cut it and um, yeah I've done all that long ago and what I ended up with was a dead stick um, so I learnt not to overwork my trees and to take my time so let's move you up slightly so these are obviously going to be my lower branches and as such um, they're a lot shorter than these upper ones but that's fine because I'm going to be shortening them back. This, uh, this being my front I'm really liking this curve which is hidden uh, a little to an extent by this branch which is sticking straight out. So I'm going to shorten that considerably, I don't know if I want to keep it long term. Um, but that definitely uh, helps with showing this line of trunk. Um, this branch is also coming back across and hiding it so I'm going to cut it back to there. There is a bud here which I hope will perhaps come across in this direction. And I'm basically going to be shortening these back to try and create the beginnings of some branch pads um, and I have a tree that is beginning to look like a tree rather than a young juvenile plant that's putting all its growth on at the top this is just a rough first prune I'm not trying to create um, any kind of masterpiece at this stage uh, what I want is to remove some of the growth as I said to stop transpiration um, take some pressure off the roots and uh,
try and build that triangle that we're often looking for again apologies that the sun has come around as I've been doing this um, it's washing out the video just a little there we go so um, assuming this to be my front I think that's looking quite good this branch is coming here um, unhelpfully back towards the front of the tree so I'm just going to put a little piece of wire on that just quickly it is a bit of a bar branch with this one but I'm not that fussed at this stage um, and with a cedar and nature they often have bar branches as the tree develops I may cut some of these branches out anyway um, okay so don't want it to go quite that far back uh, make sure I get that wire anchored that's better that's better um, So yeah, so that's a better looking front now. There's an odd piece there, but no, that's okay. And then this piece at the back here, which is a little bit too long. Um, chop that back to there, and that back to there. Okay, so one cedar of Lebanon nursery stock tree um, on its way to being a bonsai as they say some of these branches are a bit straight but uh, and this part is possibly a little bit crowded and it will need thinning at a future date so I'm not entirely happy with that top I'm not sure I don't pref didn't prefer it the other way, but it's too late now, people. Too late now. But yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's uh, zoom out so that you can see the whole thing, okay. top to bottom. A little bit of a twirl. Um, it's still dripping wet, so I'm not putting it on the turntable at the moment. The turntable doesn't like getting too wet. And there we go, back to the front. Okay, so despite what I said about overworking, I did come back um, a day or so later and uh, put a piece of wire on this branch here um, just to bring it back over to this way a little bit. Uh, so I'll insert this into the video at some point and uh, where hopefully it'll make some sense but uh, I think that does change its profile slightly and uh, I like it better like that okay so that's it for this one thank you all for watching in these strange troubled times uh, please 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 do take care of yourselves and stay safe <laughs>